At seven weeks in, how has this legislative session made you feel, heroes? I'm a man! Ah! We're with you. Strap in for a big update because this week hit working family heroes like a freight train with some of the biggest threats we've seen so far barreling through the process towards what could end up being epic battles on the floor of the Florida Senate. Tuesday proved to be one of the most challenging single days we've seen so far this session, with three priority bills up back to back in their respective committees throughout the day. First up was HB 7001 in the Senate Finance and Tax Committee. This was the House version of the proposed constitutional amendment to force a supermajority vote for any increase in tax revenue, including the closing of special interest tax exemptions and loopholes. No matter, Robin. This money goes toward building better roads. The committee quickly amended the Senate version of this horrible idea to the House bill, lowering the vote threshold slightly and removing the requirement for the supermajority vote to remove exemptions, improving this measure ever so slightly. But it's still a very bad bill. We cut general revenue by $46 million in 2013, by $558 million in 2014, $429 million in 2015, $418 million in 2016. We are at the bottom when it comes to generating revenue. This is the wrong time to put an unneeded cap on our ability to generate new revenues. The bill passed its committee with the Senate language, and it now goes to its last committee stop, Senate Appropriations. Next up was that dastardly HB 7055, the massive education train bill that will take millions of dollars from our public schools to give them to for-profit private schools. It also silences our teachers' voices on the job by eliminating their unions and much, much more. The Koch brothers packed the room with their uninformed lobbyists, but the Working Family Lobby Corps and supporters of public schools were on the case. It was asked, what happens when these unions are decertified? Contracts are lost. Now contracts in the classroom are critical because it's not just about money. It's not just about health insurance. It's about conditions in the classroom that teachers have fought to teach our students better and to keep them safe. We're gonna inject disruption. What happens if the union is decertified, repetitions, has a vote, and the next year still doesn't have 50%? Well, the process repeats again and again and again and again. I find it ironically offensive that the Chamber of Commerce and Americans for Prosperity would stand at that podium and profess to be protecting workers. That's baloney. This will do one thing and one thing only, hurt workers, hurt teachers. Not the janitors, not the bus drivers, not anybody else, just the teachers. I submit to you, if there is another group in the state of Florida more in need of union protection than teachers, I want to hear who they are. The idea that the Koch brothers are pro-union, give me a break. The bill passed, but in a surprise move, the language decertifying the teachers unions was removed from the bill, creating chaos as some in the Republican majority realized that their plans had gotten off script. Who's the bill? It'd be fun. Okay, wait, we need to, we need to get a little better here at adding, all right? Okay, thank you. All right, it passes five to four. The bill advanced without the union decertification language, but we already know that language will be forced back on the bill in the next committee stop before it reaches the floor. So keep those phone lines ringing, heroes, by calling our hotline at 855-235-2469 to urge your senator to vote no on HB 7055. <laughs> The state and national press has exposed a truly monstrous situation in Florida where crooked contractors are colluding with even more crooked insurance companies to hire undocumented workers so that when they're injured on the job, they can call immigration enforcement and have them deported to avoid paying valid workers' compensation insurance claims. Holy unrefillable prescriptions! No other state allows this to happen, but a loophole in Florida is allowing it to occur every day. The Florida AFL-CIO has been leading the charge to close this loophole this session, and SB 1568 was finally heard in its first committee. This is a critical issue, one that we know we're going to have a long, uh, a long fight uh, to get this through, and we hope that with your support this will be the first step to uh, correcting a really uh, terrible injustice. The bill narrowly passed the committee and is not expected to move again before the clock runs out this session. This is a critical first step to raise awareness about this issue and get this huge problem fixed next year. On Wednesday, thousands of students, teachers, and members of the community joined the students from Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School, the site of the senseless school shooting last week, to demand real action on school safety and Florida's gun laws. 17 students and teachers lost their lives, and these young heroes in Florida are leading a national movement to say enough is enough. We vow to do whatever it takes to ensure that no child, 
No teacher, no administrator will ever die again. We will stand strong and in solidarity, and we will not fail. Later on Wednesday, legislation affording enhanced retirement benefits or special risk retirement to frontline workers in Florida's forensic hospitals was up for a vote in committee. These workers deal with some of the most dangerous patients in the state. They are a vital piece of our public safety system, but have never been afforded the same retirement benefits as almost everyone else in the system. The bill passed its committee and could be heard on the floor of the Senate, but House leaders have blocked the measure from ever being discussed, so final passage is almost impossible. This is the most traction seen on this issue in over a decade, and it'll be back next session. With only two weeks left of session, our Lobby Corps heroes shared the importance of taking action. My first time here, and I encourage everybody to come down because you will learn a lot. It's incredibly important for everybody who possibly can to come here and meet their senators and their representatives. Hold them accountable for the promises that they made you and during their campaign. Your feet may hurt, your heart might hurt by the end of it, but it's absolutely worth it to get what you need to get across. You are the grassroots. You're the feet on the ground. And you see a perspective that they may have lost. And I stand in support of all meaningful legislation that will bring about meaningful change. And I stand against any that will bring harm to us. Local unions, send your uh, uh, officials over here and find out what your representatives and legislators are doing for you. If they're not hearing from us, they're only hearing from people inside these big buildings. And those people all look like, talk like, and sound like them. And they need to hear from the real people. If you have not been here, I encourage you to come here, meet your legislators, and voice your opinion. Let them know to, to vote the way we want them to vote. That's why we elected these officials, and that's what uh, they're here for. What I've witnessed the week that I've been here is that they are not with the working people. And we have to make sure that we hold them accountable. Do what you have to do. Get up here. If you can't get up here, go to their local offices and make your face known to them. Solidarity! Till next week, heroes, solidarity. Hey.